Hey folks, welcome to Sprig Demo's Sentimental Trickster. It's kind of a new thing, I've never done a video of a game demo before, but the dev sent me the demo and took a look at it and tried it out and it was really fun and I've been thinking about what I wanted to do after Medical Murder and this seemed like a fun little thing to do. Also, if you turn out to be interested in the game, it's being kickstarted at the moment, so there'll be a link to that in the description. And the demo is continuing to be updated. In fact, while I was making this video, the dev put out another update to the demo, fixing some typos and other things. Alright, let's get to it. Unknown number, huh? Like hell if I'm gonna buy anything. Wait, would 10 calls a day from people who want to sell you stuff count as harassment? Well, think about the silver lining. At least they always remember about you, even if no one else does. Maybe if I don't say anything, they'll hang up. Or, better not. I'm morbidly curious to hear what they want this time. It's me. Shit. I'm sorry, but the number you're trying to call is currently unavailable. Please try again later. Do you really think I'm not able to recognize your voice, Haru? Eh, <laughs> busted. Wait, did you lose your phone again? Whose number is this? I didn't lose it. I just don't know where it is. And it's Kiichiro's phone. Honestly, you should have his number by now. You never know what might happen, and... I know, I know. I'll save it this time, I promise. Good. So, did you get there all right? Trying to find the boarding house right now. This place is a maze. <laughs> I mean, I'm the guy who got lost grocery shopping, remember? I'm not exactly the master of finding things. I wonder who I inherited it from. I hear a heavy sigh on the other end of the line. Not good. Mom, is everything okay? Well, is it? Aren't you going to ask? Um, yeah, I guess. So, how are... things? Ryu keeps asking about you. He didn't eat anything today. Oh, he'll get over it. You wouldn't believe how fast kids forget stuff. Haru... Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. But he'll be fine, don't worry. It's not like I left without saying goodbye. Can you call him when you have time? Today? Yeah, I guess. But if he's angry, I doubt he'll want to talk to me anyway. I never said he's angry. He's just... confused. Are you confused as well? I... I don't know. I just wish there was something I could do to... <laughs> no, you're kidding. You always have everything together, Mom. You know the answer to every question. It's like mom magic. Do you remember? You taught me that all problems can be solved. That made me feel like invincible when I was younger. Silence. Should have expected that. As, um, so, anyway, I better get going. I'll end up homeless if I don't find the damn place. She sighs again, but this time it's very quiet. She probably wanted to say something, but gave up. I guess I'm off the hook for now. Remember that I love you. I love you too, Mom. Take care. When I talk to Mom, I can always count on myself to fuck things up. It's somehow reassuring. I guess we all know who's getting this year's Best Son Award. Look at me, all alone in a big city. Honestly, I still can't get over how huge this thing is. I guess if you can climb every building in your town, you're easily impressed by skyscrapers. I think my mom took me here once, a long time ago. I remember looking at these buildings and thinking that they have no end. No matter how long you climb the stairs, you're never able to reach the top. The flawless logic of a child. You'll probably see it in one of those sophisticated low-budget flicks. A journey without a destination, just continuing on and on, the end of time. Wait, am I getting philosophical here? Eh, <sighs> this is what talking to my mom does to me. At least if there's nothing to look up to, you'll never be disappointed, right? But let's hope there is a destination this time, or else I'm spending the night under a bridge. The boarding house must be around here somewhere. At least if I can trust those vague instructions the landlord gave me. I couldn't hear his voice that well either. No matter where I stood, there was this strange static. With my luck, I found the only real haunted house in Japan. Not that I've actually found it yet. Am I even close? I guess there's no point in getting myself more lost, if that's even possible. I'll just, uh, 
find a nice stranger and ask them for directions. I see a French kissing couple, a bearded man glaring at them, and three young people talking near the park. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go with these three. I walk a little bit closer. There are two girls, but I pay no attention to them. My eyes are instantly glued to the tall guy in the middle. Hey, not like anyone can blame me, I mean, just look at him. This is the kind of guy that makes you see flowers bloom spontaneously in the background, shoujo manga style. <laughs> see? The childhood friend you've always had a crush on, but are too embarrassed to confess to. And then he marries, has children, and you end up writing angry letters to women's magazines. His eyes are warm enough to burn you. His smile can make you blind, and he kills with his kindness. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the greatest catch of the modern age. Currently chatted up by two yet unidentified females. The guy's attention is focused on the girl on the left. At first I thought he's being persecuted by fans, but it looks like he's having a good time. Maybe I shouldn't disturb them. The girl smiles broadly and nods her head at something he said. She maintains eye contact, no fidgeting or blushing. Either she's just a friend or she's very confident. She's tall, but kind of cute, with light brown hair and big sparkly eyes. The cat on her headband is... disturbing. Extremely so. Its eyes seem to follow you wherever you go. The more I look at it, the creepier it gets. And no, I don't usually hallucinate. Not on Mondays, anyway. And the second girl... Uh-oh, princess alert. This chick looks like she's living in one of those country-sized mansions with a hundred Tanaka butlers. I bet her dog is called Elizabeth, too. I honestly can't decide whether she's drop-dead gorgeous or just pretty underneath all this makeup. Her hair is styled to perfection, not a stray strand in sight. Her clothes look tailor-made and very expensive. Great, she's looking this way. How do you greet foreigners again? Okay, English. Let's stick to English. Yes, please do. Now, what do I remember? No, this is not the time for my mind to go blank. Fuck. The guy and the cat girl have noticed me as well. Now they're all looking at me, while I'm staring at them like a dumbass. I just need to say something. I lock eyes with the blonde girl, steal myself and hope to do my best. How, how do you do, miss? It's lovely day inside, no? Seems that my best is not that good these days. The princess's eyes widen in surprise. She opens her mouth. Her brows are knit together, and I think I see a drop of sweat on her pretty forehead. This is Anna speaking. How may I help you? Silence envelops us like a warm, fuzzy blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Both the guy and the glasses girl are shaking with laughter. The princess blushes deeply and glares at me. I'm sorry, Anna. You say she doesn't like English very much. She's Japanese, you know? Like, born and raised here. And her appearance? Well, I guess you can call it, like, the power of cosplay? I... I see. Who's she cosplaying as? Now, mainly herself. But you should see her closet. I swear it looks like every major anime character dropped their clothes there. And her hair. Oh my god, that reminds me. We have to go. Sorry. We'll like explain later or something, Kane. Bye. Glasses girl takes, or rather grabs, the princess's hand, and they leave quickly. Not a second glance in my direction. Don't worry about it. They do that pretty often. He gives me a reassuring smile. Probably one of his best. Still, when people run after talking to you, it might mean something. Kane, she said. A hot guy with a girl's name, huh? I wonder if it bothers him sometimes. I'd ask, but somehow I feel it's not the best way to start a friendship. Not that scaring off his friends is, either. You're not from around here, are you? Uh, what gave me away? The accent? The clothes? Or was it just picking on random blondes? Uh, I guess it was a little bit of everything. He smiles, but doesn't say anything else. Just looks at me. Oh, right. I did have something important to ask. Time to prove that I don't just approach people to make them feel uncomfortable. Actually, I'm lost. I'm looking for a boarding house. 
It's supposed to be somewhere around here, but my instructions are <laughs> lacking. I thought that might be the case. Don't worry, I know where it is. Follow me. I let out a big sigh of relief. Great, thank you so much. He walks closer to the road leading into the park. Or should I say forest? I try to peer into it, but there's not much light shining through the leaves. The road becomes thinner and full of overgrown grass. A couple of meters away it disappears completely, like a prop that was just put here for the sake of fake park scene. Trees get darker and thicker. Their branches look like gnarly fingers, ready to grab you and teach you why it's not good to wander alone in a big, dark forest. Seems my joke about a haunted house came to bite me in the ass. Let's hope it won't run away with it. <laughs> um, are you sure that this gloomy looking thicket is where we're supposed to go? Absolutely. Leave everything to me. I'll get you there. Said the serial killer as he sharpened his knife and wondered where to bury the body. No, no, Haru, think positive. This guy looks like I could trust him. Maybe even be friends with him. And then murder you. Which is exactly what a serial killer would make himself look like. Huh? Okay, stop. Paranoid is not the way to go here. This way of thinking will get you to shut yourself inside your house and start glaring at people through half-closed curtains. I glance at the guy. His shoulders are shaking slightly. What? <laughs> your face. Never mind. Is everything okay? Uh, y yeah. Well, let's go. Excuse me for having a weird face. We walk for a long time. Not that what I'm doing can be called walking. More like trying to stay vertical. I'm clumsy in general, but today I'm breaking new records. I almost hate the hot guy for how graceful he moves. He must have crossed this part of the forest like a million times. There are no signs or landmarks. Nothing to tell in which direction we're going. To be fair, in my current state, I probably wouldn't notice a big this way banner. Finally, we enter a clearing. Nice place. Well, here it is. Yeah, so you're not a serial killer. <laughs> what was that? Uh, how do you know your way around here so well? I must have tripped like a million times. Honestly, I would have never made it here by myself. I live here. Did you come to visit someone? Um, no. I'm gonna stay here as well. I knew it. You're Haru. I wasn't sure. I expected you to have more luggage, though. You look like you're coming back from the university to visit someone. Yeah, I was in a hurry when I left. Didn't want to miss any of my classes, I guess. The landlord's told me about you. He seemed very excited. He's been busy cleaning up a room for you. Really? Weird. He doesn't even know me. Come inside. I'll introduce you to everyone. We enter a small hallway right next to the living room, and I immediately drop my backpack to the ground. It's not heavy, just old and worn out. I was in too much of a hurry to buy a new one. This guy seems too nice to make a big deal out of it, but I don't know who else I'll be living with. And nothing screams, be friends with me, more than a tattered rag on your shoulders, right? Suddenly, two guys appear in the living room. They seem to be in the middle of an argument and don't notice us. The first guy is shorter, but his tone of voice commands attention. He has a straight nose, good posture, and really pale skin. Excuse me, mister, are you a vampire? Crawled out of your coffin too soon and feeling cranky? It wouldn't kill you to go out and see the sun once in a while, you know? I guess, even with this deep frown, he would look good on a magazine cover. One of those high and mighty ones and too smart for you. His eyes are nice. Unwavering, bright, and determined. Well, at least determined to intimidate the second guy. I wonder how these eyes would look on a smiling face. Although the second guy is taller, his shoulders are slumped. He has an apologetic smile plastered on his face, and his voice is soothing rather than demanding. He's old, but it's a good old. Not the sleazy teenage girl chasing old. Rather more like your favorite uncle you come to and cry about all the boyfriends that dumped you. Or the daddy that has his way with you, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, he has that kind of gullible air to him. A guy who gives money on Halloween when he's out of candy, just not to disappoint the kids. His eyes are the color of faded leaves. His hair and clothes are moderately messy, 
but not dirty. He has a good build though, and large hands. They look powerful. I wonder what they feel like on you. Eh, I'm just a big perv, aren't I? Eh, I don't mind. Now, now. Calm down, Chinya. This will never happen. Rejected. I will never comprehend how you could have been so thoughtless. Accepting attendance without doing a basic background check. Are you in the mood to pick up strays? What if he's a criminal? A junkie? A pervert? Or... I've had enough of this. I clear my throat and they finally notice me. Glasses guy looks like he's just found a spot on his new expensive shoes. The older guy glances my way but avoids eye contact. A deer in the headlights. Maybe he thinks that if he stays still, I'll just go away. I look straight at the nasty one. Hello there. Would you care for a blood sample or, or maybe a mouth swab will do? No anal examinations though. After all, we haven't even had our first date yet. I think I hear a snicker coming from the hot guy behind me. The vampire stares at me, like he's caught off guard. He recovers quickly though, and his eyes narrow. For a moment I had the slightest bit of hopes that your personality doesn't match your appearance. But it seems you're trash all the way through. Yeah. Tell me, is it difficult to walk with that stick so far up your ass? Apparently only the prince appreciates my charming wit. Glasses guy is not amused. Ah, uh, you're finally here. Aru, right? We were just, um, talking about you. Y yeah I can see that. Whatever switch this old guy has, it's on now. This is the moment you choose to intervene? Seriously? This guy's timing is as good as his taste in tenants. Four Eyes glares at the old guy with an I told you so written all over his face. The old guy looks at the ground. I refuse to avert my eyes. I advise you to take your sorry excuse for luggage and leave before someone carries you out. Bloody and unconscious. Damn, you noticed my backpack. No, wait, I don't care because he's an asshole. Sorry, but I don't respond to threats so early in the morning. You want a piece of me? Make an appointment. Uh, no one's leaving. Haru was recommended to me by, um, a friend. I can vouch for him. This time the old guy straightens up and holds his ground. Glasses guy looks at him, his mouth setting into a thin line. Well, I suppose you can do what you wish with your own home. Even destroy it. It's your call. Just don't think about asking me to clean up your mess again. Glasses guy turns on his heel and leaves without looking at any of us. If I kept a daily score of my encounters with strangers, I might become a little depressed. But honestly, I'm just happy he's gone. I'm sorry about Shinya. He's very specific about certain kinds of things. Doesn't take changes very well. I should have told him about you earlier. I hope that he doesn't move out because of me. Please let him move out. No, wait, rather please let him not kick me out because of this guy. I don't think so. No matter what Shinya says, he's quite resilient. He doesn't run away easily. Whoopee! Does resilient mean bold and threatening? We must have different dictionaries. But more importantly... Do I know you from somewhere? This, um, guy, I mean. Kane said you were really happy that I was coming to see you. Don't you remember me? Uh, I guess you were pretty small back then. I'm Soichiro. I was your mother's classmate at the university. Before she decided the big city didn't suit her, I moved away. She brought you here once when she was visiting. Oh, I see. Did you like me? Wait, what? Uh, Bort? Next time when my mouth decides it's time to ask a weird question, I'll just stuff it with something. The old man's eyes become distant for a moment. Then he smiles apologetically and nods his head. He looks troubled, like he remembered something but doesn't know if he should tell me. Um, this house is amazing, all hidden away in the middle of the woods. I keep expecting the big bad wolf to come knocking any minute. Or the old lady who wanted to eat those German kids. Uh, d did I like it here? This brings a more genuine smile to his face. Cannibalism is such a good icebreaker. <laughs> you certainly did. I remember you laughing and running around in the garden. You didn't want to come home at all. I'm sorry that I don't remember that then. And that I don't remember you. No worries. We have plenty of time to catch up. Would you like to see your room now? I nod and glance at the friendly guy with what I hope looks like gratitude. He smiles at me. I get the impression that when I leave the room, he'll start laughing. I follow the nice old man whose name I don't remember yet. Here we are. It's not much, but I hope you'll like it. The room is small, but clean and well furnished. 
the bedsheet smell of washing powder. There's a lot of sunlight creating uneven patches all over the carpet. I can hear birds chirping nearby. This is great, thank you. Just what I imagined it would be. Are you sure I can have it for the price we discussed? It seems too cheap for such a nice room. It's all yours. My room is right on the left. If you need anything, let me know. I left your house keys by the bed. When should I expect the rest of your things? Um, so far this is it. I might ask my family to send me something more soon, but for now I think I'll just go to the nearest store and buy whatever I forgot. I remember there was one near the... par... forest? He nods and looks at me. A little bit too long. But before I can get uncomfortable, he blinks and laughs nervously. You probably want to rest now. You look tired. When you're ready, I'll show you around the house. Thanks. He walks out of the room and I take a deep breath, alone at last. I lie down on the bed and inhale the fresh, flowery scent. The pillow feels nice and fluffy under my head. Okay, so I live with a guy who already hates my guts. I can deal with that. At least the pretty boy is laughing at my jokes. On the other hand, if he's as popular as he seems, I'll be lucky if I'm not stomped to death by rabid fans. Those two girls near the park, well, the big black forest to be fair, didn't seem like the stomping type though. Maybe it won't be that bad after all. Oh, and let's not forget about the kind old man with bad timing. He seems like someone who's forgotten often, doesn't he? So he runs the place. I think he recalled something strange about the last time I visited. I wonder what it was. I need to call my little brother. I promised. I'll just rest for a minute and then... I'm in a classroom, sitting at my desk. A girl in front of me goes on and on about something, but I can only see her mouth moving. No sound is coming through. There's a cheap camera rolling behind her and she holds a microphone. I want to turn my head, but it's fixed in place. My body is rigid and doesn't feel like flesh. From the corner of my eye, I see the silhouettes of the other students. Everyone's attention seems to be focused on us. I feel my pulse quickening. My palms get sweaty and there's a lot of moisture on my back. I want to flee, but can't move a muscle. I say... What were they interviewing you about, I wonder? I wake up, covered in sweat. My heart is beating like crazy. I'm impressed that I could even sleep like this. I think I dreamt about something, but when I try to recall it, everything gets fuzzy. Whoa, it's already dark outside. I must have needed more sleep than I thought. I wonder if they've been checking up on me, just to see if I didn't die here or something. Well, I bet the vampire would be happy if I did, or rather, less unhappy. I gather myself up and go to the living room. I see the old man. Wait, maybe it's time to start calling them by their real names. Otherwise, I'll never learn them. So, Soichiro is busy making something in the kitchen. My stomach growls. I'll have to feed it pretty soon. The Bishonen, I mean Kane, seems to be studying in the smaller part of the room. I'd try to socialize, because my previous attempts were so successful, but I need to go to the store. I hope it'll still be open. I'm not exactly thrilled to go alone. Maybe I can ask someone to go with me. The game has been saved. Yay! Ask Kane, the hot guy, ask Soichiro, the kind old man, ask Shinya, the mean one, or go alone. Huh. I'm kind of curious what happens if you ask a Shinya, the mean one. If he just tells you to go fuck yourself, probably. Ugh, I can't stand that guy, and yet, somehow, his name is the first thing that popped into my head. I know, I'll treat it as a slip of my tired, overburdened brain, and go with someone else. <laughs> Didn't expect that. Um, let's go with Kane. Um, hey, Kane. Are you going to the store? Soichiro said you were planning to. Do you mind getting a couple of things for me? I wrote them down. I hope it won't be too much of a problem. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, did you maybe want me to go with you? Awkward silence fills the room. I can hear the clocks ticking and my dignity draining away. Kane recovers first and smiles pleasantly. I guess it makes sense that the beautiful guy would, um, basically expect you to do shit for him. I mean, would you like me to go with you? I'd be happy to. Yes, I would, but how can I ask you now? 
Aren't you supposed to be like this perfect prince and guess everyone's wishes on the spot? Come on. <laughs> no way. I love going to the store alone. I mean, without anyone. Not even with a single person. So that's it. Only me. By myself. <laughs> going alone is just the best. Uh, uh, oh, alright then. Well, would you buy these for me? <laughs> sure. Uh, I am the king of awkward. Look at me, I'm so fucking popular. My first day in a new place, I'm already making friends. We're even going to the store together. Go Team Haru. Oh, and a dark night in the forest. The forest at night looks like something you'd want to leave alone. Or otherwise, it might bite you. But I need a toothbrush, and I doubt that this landlord has spares. So, I'll walk, think happy thoughts, and dodge if necessary. That means you didn't have a toothbrush while you were traveling. Really? Man, that's how you get cavities, dude. I start walking. I have absolutely no sense of direction. But there is a thin, well-trodden line I can follow. Somehow I didn't notice it before. Maybe because I was so focused on not falling down on my face. Didn't want the pretty boy to think I'm a complete loser. I have my flashlight, which is helpful. How did I pack this but forget my toothbrush? Good question. After a while, it gets difficult to walk. I felt grabbed by things when I was here before, but now it's on a whole different level. The forest has decided that foreplay is over, and it's time for business. Somehow I find, or rather, fight my way out. Even the fake park-like entrance to the forest looks eerie in the moonlight. The shop is still open, but there's a group of people blocking the entrance. I can see others inside the shop, but they don't seem very eager to leave. Outside, four punks in tattoos circle around one guy and a girl hidden behind him. She's shaking. Uh-oh. Trouble. Oh. Despite being outnumbered, this guy has a fierce smile on his face. His eyes flash and he shifts his weight from one foot to the other, preparing to strike. He looks fast, agile, and hungry, like a big cat. A guy you don't want to mess with. Doesn't seem malicious or cruel, though. Rather, he looks like he's having fun, playing with his food. The guys who circle around him don't think they're food just yet. They're glaring at him, their ugly mouths twisted. He probably spoiled their fun. At least they don't seem to be carrying any weapons. Maybe I should do something. Yeah, why not? Let's help him. Nothing like a good fight to brighten a lousy day. Maybe if I return covered in wounds and bruises, Shinya will be nicer to me. Or he'll decide I'm in a gang and call the police. Wow, look at you. Just when I thought I'd avoid queues at this hour. Do they have like a special sale or something? The pierced guy blinks and stares at me. His attention is now partly focused on me, but he still minds the thugs in front of us. What the hell are you doing, kiddo? You want to get beaten up? I can take care of myself, thank you. And anyway, I feel pretty irritated. So this would be a good way to vent some steam. I still don't think it's a good... One guy comes at me with a sloppy right hook. I dodge and give him a nice punch in the jaw. He stumbles back. Hey, didn't your mom teach you not to interrupt when someone else is speaking? <laughs> I like you. Bam, bam, bam. The fight is unfair. These punks can barely keep up with us. We let them land a punch now and then just to make them lower their guard, or just because we feel sorry for them. Soon they run away, cartoon style, leaving clouds of dust behind them. Thanks for the help, kiddo. You may not look it, but you sure know how to fight. Had a lot of opportun- <laughs> Had a lot of opportunities to practice. I guess when you dye your hair violet, some people take it the wrong way or something. Well, I'm sure it was worth it. You look pretty. Very handsome, and manly. Right. The girl approaches us slowly, like she was afraid we chased away the bad guys only to get to her ourselves. The guy smiles at her and she relaxes. Um, thank you so much. I thought they would, uh, I was so scared. But you showed up, helping a complete stranger. I guess you don't see that often. I was so lucky you were here. Her voice is still shaking, but her knees have stopped wobbling. You don't know each other? Nah. I just saw these guys trying to grab her, so I told them to stop. But they wouldn't listen. 
Do you usually go out at night searching for bad guys and trying to get yourself killed? Only when there's nothing good on the TV. I think I'll take... He glances at the girl. She blushes and bats her eyelashes at him. I guess she's recovered now. I'm Aya. I'll take Aya-chan home, just in case. Will you be alright on your own? And what do you think? That's the spirit. Well, see you later. Bye. That cheered me up. Time to buy the shit and get the hell out of here. Those guys look like they won't be fighting anytime soon, but you never know what else will be trying to get you. Especially if you decide it's a good idea to cross half of a goddamn forest alone at night. This time, the forest cuts me some slack. I barely even stumble. When I get back, the house is very quiet. I go straight to my room. I gather a couple of things, and leave to enter a small bathroom at the end of the hall. I take a long shower. I feel restless, but I don't want to wander around the house at night. I might wake up the vampire. I've just realized how weird it sounds. I return to my room. I'm about to throw myself on the bed when... This is it. We hope that you had fun playing this demo. Please spread the word and... Uh... 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 How's it going, Kane? I thought you were sleeping. I bought your things, but didn't want to wake you. I was going to give them to you in the morning. Why didn't you open the door, Haru? I called out to you. You knew it was me. Um, we didn't have time, so... I thought you wanted to be friends with me. Friends should always have time for each other. W uh, wait, what? are you going out of character on me now? I'm not prepared for this. I think we need to talk. Come with me for a bit. No, we don't. Stop it. Uh, how did I trigger the Yandere route? Help! Oh, Haru-san. When I'm done with you, you'll be the most perfect doll. <laughs> this isn't the first demo I've been sent of a, a game like this, but it's the first one... But it's the first one that I really enjoyed and wanted to make a video of. If you're interested in it, like I said at the beginning of the video, there'll be a link in the description. Uh, it's still in development, being kickstarted. Anyway, folks. Peace.